Peekskill Museum, uh, the other is the Peekskill uh, Lincoln Society, and, uh, and uh, I forget what the other one is. Oh, the, uh, anyway, uh, so altogether, uh, I didn't write that down, I'm still uh, improvising. So uh, today altogether is an educational, historic, and authentic event. Now we are here today as part of the national state and local commemorations 100, 150 years since the American Civil War, Civil War. Now specifically, we are marking an event in 1862 at the tremendous battle known as Antietam. That one day's fighting resulted in 23,000 killed, wounded, and missing Americans on both sides. John William Billy Patterson, whose stone that we are standing near, and I hope you get a chance to read the inscription. It pretty much gives you uh, some details of what happened uh, to him and what happened to his regiment, was among those soldiers who displayed extraordinary valor that resulted in his death that memorable day, September 17, 1862, while carrying his regimental flag forward towards the enemy position to successfully stop the invasion of the North by Confederate forces. So we are here today to re-honor Billy Pattison and his brother, Henry Pattison, for, the valiant, for their valiant contributions at that tremendous battle. I wish to introduce you now to uh, descendants of the Soldier Brothers, Conrad Youngren and Pattison Youngren, and they will place a wreath on the gravesite stone. Anything. I'd just like to thank the Peekskill Museum and the uh, Peekskill Lincoln Society for, uh, for this event. Uh, I've been coming here all my life, my earliest memories, probably late 40s. I come up here with my aunts who were the, uh, the daughters of Henry uh, Patterson, my great aunts were the daughters of Henry Patterson. We come up here on what they call Decoration Day. and. Uh, now Memorial Day, and uh, place a wreath, and and I hear the story of uh, Billy Patterson and his brother, my great grandfather uh, Henry, uh, and to be here is a, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful experience. Thank you very much, all. Thank you, John. Thank you. John. I'm now going to speak some words by a former Peekskill Methodist minister, his name was Clark Wright, and he delivered these words at the dedication of the huge monument at the Antietam battlefield to the 9th New York Regiment. These are his words. My surviving comrades of our old regiment come here for the last time. Here we bid a final goodbye to all that is mortal of those who found a grave on the field of glory. May their repose be peaceful as the flowers of springtime that bestrew their graves with their fragrance each recurring decoration day. We can never forget them, but we will remember their fidelity, devotion, and heroism. May it be ours when the Supreme Commander of the Universe shall call our names to answer with alacrity and joy here. So when the final report is made, it will show all present at that grand reunion on the shores of a blessed immortality. Until then, dear comrades of the Ninth New York volunteers who found your sepulcher on this field, farewell, farewell. May the angels of God watch over your sacred dust the night of final separation has come. The arms are stacked. 
The, short, the sword is sheathed. Night is spreading her mantle, but the stars of hope are brightly shining. Some in the camp are already sleeping. Soon we will join them. Now we will have the uh, rifle salute. Uh, are we ready for that? Oh, I'm sorry. Bill? Good afternoon. I, um, we're here today, as all of you are, as patriotic Americans. As a teacher in the Somers Middle School, a number of my students are here as an honorary color guard, and some of uh, my students and their parents are here as well. And we're here today gathered to remember what the Pattisons did and the sacrifice that they made for our country. At least we forget the sacrifice that was made on our battlefield through the course of our history. We must never forget, and should we do that, we lose a sense of who we are as a nation. As a reenactor, I had the opportunity to portray a ninth New York at Antietam this past September. And as we reenacted that battle and we uh, presented for the public that were able to come and for those across the country who would read news of the event, we remember what they did. And I have just a few uh, words of a primary account of that that fight. The members of the 9th New York, present for duty that day, were 373. 54 were killed, 158 were wounded, 28 were, were missing, for a total of 240 casualties that day. One man recalling that day wrote this, all this fearful work in store for us, with what results to each personally in the future, measured properly, probably by moments, would reveal. How does one feel under such conditions? To tell the truth, I realized the situation most keenly and felt very uncomfortable. I said to myself, this is the duty I, I undertook to perform for my country, and now I'll do it and leave the results with God. My greater fear was not that I might be killed, but I might be grievously wounded and left a victim suffering on the field. The nervous strain was plainly visible upon all of us. All moved doggedly forward in obedience to orders in absolute silence so far as talking was concerned. The compressed lip, the set teeth, showed the nerve and resolution had been summoned to the discharge of duty. At the word, a rush was made for the fences. In a second, the air was full of that hiss of bullets 